Good mythical afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. A with Chapter 9, Section 1, Industrial Revolution, Early Industries, and Early Inventions. Uh, so please, as always, make sure you are writing your notes and that you are listening to the vlog as I speak because I bet some of the information will be said and will not be written. That's just a little bit of a hit for you. So let's kind of start off. Uh, so the uh, first thing we're going to talk about is the free enterprise system and factories. So the War of 1812, because we were blockaded by Britain, uh, what it did, it forced the United States to become to begin the Industrial Revolution, or more or less begin to make things not based off of hand, but by factories. And what happened is because we couldn't trade, we ended up having to make most of our um, manufactured goods, like weapons or clothing or shoes, ourselves instead of importing it from a different country. So what this does is helps create our industrial base in the northern sections of the United States, also known as the northern states or New England. So these hand, and we've got to understand this definitely revolutionized how we do item, how we make things. Because instead of taking months or weeks to make a t-shirt, it only takes a couple of minutes. So from there we develop the factory system. And what this does, this brings both workers, the machines needed to manufacture their items, and they place it all near their energy source, which at that time was water. And water in particular was very plentiful in the New England area or the northern states because of being so close to the rivers and the Atlantic Ocean. And what this does, people begin to migrate out of the farms to large cities because that's where the jobs are. You're going to go where the jobs are located. And what this does is because of the factory system, the Industrial Revolution that began in Britain, big hit there, and the War of 1812 made the United, made the United States, in particular the northern part of the United States, industrialize and become wealthier faster than it ever has been before. And so when these factories end up coming to New England, there's quite a few reasons why. One, water power was available. They were close to rivers. They were close to um, the access to the ocean, and they had a large amount of immigrants. So they had a willing labor force that was willing to work uh, not on a farm, but in cities and factories. So the first uh, factory was built by Samuel Slater in Pawtucket, Rhode Island in 1790. So from there, we're going to talk about the Lowell Mill. So the Lowell Mills was a group of mills that were created to spin raw cotton to yarn. What really makes the Lowell Mills interesting is that this was an all-women factory. Only women were allowed to work at the Lowell Mills. And these women, uh, they hired women who would live on company property and would live in their boarding houses. Um, so it was actually quite progressive at the time, but the problem was there was a few things that they were dealing with. Uh, so first of all, they worked 12.5 hours every single day except for Sundays in an extremely loud and unsafe environment. Um, <clears throat> At first, they paid the women really well because they were a great labor force. But as more competition came in, uh, strict environments were created and wages began to be cut because profit. And the environment itself begins to worsen because you have like cotton floating in the air, which will get this thing called cotton lung. Uh, and a lot of people would lose uh, body parts, fingers, and would actually get really ill from all the issues going on in these factories. But what was kind of neat was that the Lowell Mills in particular really helped show women that they are able to work and make wages just like their, just like the men in the country could. And so what ends up happening is we begin to uh, figure out different ways to manufacture different items. So in 1797, the United States government hired a gentleman named Eli Whitney to create this idea to make muskets in a factory. Because prior to this, muskets were made by hand by a blacksmith. So if your barrel or if your uh, your uh, trigger decides to break, you have to have someone custom build a new one. Instead, Eli Whitney decides to use this idea called interchangeable parts. And that means you make every part of something exactly the same so it's easier to switch out broken parts. So for example, think of your cell phones. Everyone's cell phones, uh, they all use the, more or less the same cable. Uh, all Android phones use either USB-C or a... Um, a micro USB, while almost all, win all Apple phones uses a lightning pen with a USB. And what this does is that if you lose your cable, you don't have to buy a whole entire new phone because you just go buy a new cable. And that's kind of what it does. Same thing, you know, you lose uh, 
maybe a desk breaks. Instead of buying a brand new desk, you get a, 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 a part, replace it, and move on with your life. So what this does, this allows what we call the standardization of consumer goods. The idea that goods for the consumer are made exactly the same, so it makes life easier both for the factory owner and the consumer themselves. It also makes these goods cheaper to produce, cheaper to repair, faster to make, and you can actually hire workers who have less skill than those who used to do it by hand. So not only did we start to build items and manufacture goods quicker, cheaper, and easier, we also began to move people, goods, and messages quicker across the nation. So in 1807, a gentleman named Robert Fulton invented a steamboat that could travel against the current. And what made, what made this so popular and so important is for a while, you had to, if you were going up and down the Mississippi, you had to wait till the current changed. Or you had to, you can go down the Mississippi, but had to get a horse or a carriage ride to go north. So what instead, what this does, this allows a, um, a steamboat to have enough uh, horsepower to go against the current. So they would use the paddles on the back of the boat, which are right over here, and they would be able to go against the current to move faster and quicker. So you can go up and down canals, up and down rivers, all over the place at a much quicker pace for a lot less money. And that really made the United States feel like it was beginning to shrink. Um, then we have a guy named Samuel Morris, who in 1837 invents the telegraph. And what he ends up doing is the telegraph is this idea is that uses long and short bursts of electricity to send messages across a long wire. This is the very beginning of telecommunications in the United States. This is the very first time that people can communicate across long distances almost instantaneously. You like your cell phones, you like the internet, you like computers, you like any of those things. It starts with the telegraph and Morris and Morse code, which was what the telegraph would use to communicate. It was three long, long beeps or three short beeps and in combination that allowed messages to be read out. So kind of what would happen is the person over here would be a sender. This would be the receiver. And the sender would more or less hit this button a few times. It would go like beep, 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 beep. Send a sh short and long burst of electricity across a very thin wire to the receiver where the receiver will print out or put little holes inside of a piece of paper that says it was short or a long burst. And that will make it so that you can actually read it by translating those bursts into uh, words. So this would be the very beginning of text messaging. So what this ends up doing is that because of the, both the uh, steamboat and the telegraph, it allows the United States to move items, people, and messages quicker and faster so it made our large nation seem much smaller which allowed a lot more improvements to occur including technology and farming for example john deere invents the first light with steel plow prior to this the plow was actually very heavy cast iron and it was very difficult for a oxen a horse or even a person to push that plow and because now that it's lightweight and steel you can do more work with le with using less energy so if you can only plow about one acre a day, now you can do about two to three because it's lighter, so it uses less energy. Uh, Cypress McCormick invents the mechanical reaper and the threshing machine, which made harvesting wheat easier. So a mechanical reaper, if you rem if you think of a like a grim reaper with his scythe, that big thing that he carries around, he they would a mechanical reaper would be uh, quite a few of those attached to like a circular cylinder, and it would cut down all the wheat in the area. While the threshing machine would take would collect that wheat and separate the stalk from the wheat itself or the grain itself. So it made farms in the in the Midwest able to feed the factory workers that are in the Northeast. And then the Northeast would make items that the West and the Southeast would use. The Southeast would also send cotton and other goods like tobacco to New England so they can make those products. So we end up with a little bit of, a, of this idea called the American system about every part of the United States is helping the other part of the United States become successful. So speaking about cotton, the cotton boom itself. So prior to uh, the invention of the cotton gin, slavery was actually decreasing in the South because it wasn't worth the amount of investment. It was way too expensive to actually hire a, um, well, not to hire, excuse me, to buy a slave, force him to work, 
because what and then try to keep them alive because what ended up happening is that it just was not worth the money it was cheaper to just have an immigrant come in pay them money and then let them figure out their own way and so what happens is eli uh whitney the guy who created the interchangeable parts with muskets invents this thing called a cotton gin and what this does is it's a machine that cleans cotton faster and quicker and what this does this makes um cotton production skyrocket in the south we went from one pound a day clean to approximately 50 pounds cleaned a day per person so what this does this makes it so that slavery is a lot more of a viable viable way of life it was cheaper to hire to buy a slave now than to hire immigrants so slavery began to increase because of this cotton gin and that's probably really important so this all comes to this idea of the free enterprise system the idea of capitalism that individuals and businesses who own property and choose how to use it so in other terms that people not the government is in charge of capital and what to do with it the united states government does not have any right to tell you what what type of business to open you want to open a chinese food restaurant go for it if you want to be able to open a factory go for it you have to find you have to make sure there's a market and there are consumers to buy that good which is awesome because this is one of the reasons why the united states grows so quickly is because of our ability and our risk-taking culture the idea that we will make a risk to make money we have no problem doing that and without government intervention we didn't need the government to intervene and give us money or give us help to be successful which is what which is great and this industrial revolution will change the face of america and remember the north industrialized the south stays agriculture and in particular cash crops while the west will mostly be feeding there will be what we call the breadbasket of the united states so your um Discussion board question for this one is real easy. Uh, which of the following uh, early inventions do you think created the biggest uh, impact on American society? Was it the cotton gin? Uh, was it the, uh, the steel plow, the mechanical reaper? Was it the telegraph or the steamboat? Or even interchangeable parts? And as always, don't forget to be awesome.